Hello Youtubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another 10 video ads video. Once more delving into the realm of VHS tapes, I have 9 VHS tapes here. And after I show them, I will be showing one of the strangest Hong Kong films I have ever seen. I had recently ordered this from Yes Asia. This is the VCD release. And there's something rather uh, unique to the VCD release that apparently the DVD release didn't get. So I'll be going over that when I talk about the film, which as I said, is really an odd film. This is not my first go around with this video. Uh, I had uh, been about a minute into it when I heard a knock on the door. In this package, there should be a Sega Master System game. So most probably that video will be the one I do after this video. Okay. First up, we have American Psycho. Now, included in the cast of this film is Willem Dafoe. Now, I don't know what kind of character he plays in this film, but he typically tends to gravitate towards playing real creeps. The creepiest of which I can remember seeing was in the film Autofocus, which is a biopic which covers the life and murder of Bob Crane, the actor who played Hogan on Hogan's Heroes. And, um, like I said, Willem Dafoe in that film plays a real creep. Okay. When VHS first launched in late 77, longest uh, tapes that were available were T120s. That is, they could hold 120 minutes. By the end of the format's life, it was possible to find T200s if you looked. They weren't that easy to find, but you could find them. Now, when I worked in television, I had to use base 6 math a lot. So, for those of you out there who are still in school and, they, and your friends tell you, you're not going to need to know any of this stuff when you get out. You're not going to ever use it. I used math every single day because we had to time everything to the second and we had to do what we call back timing. If we hit the network at 8 o'clock and we were running a film locally on 16 millimeter film, say, prior to going in the network, about five or six segments out of the film being over, we would start back timing, uh, taking the time that we would have to hit network and taking out the length of every break and every segment. And it was critical to get out on time. So normally we back timed several times during the show when we were going into network next. Anyway. It's been a while since I did any base 6 math, but I'm going to give it a shot. This runs 168 minutes. If I'm doing the math correctly, that should be 2 hours and 48 minutes. If I'm not doing the math correctly, somebody will let me know down there. But we had to use math every single day, every single hour. And if I told you what we had to go through working master control when I first got into television, you wouldn't think a human being would be capable of doing that sort of thing. Multitasking like you wouldn't believe. And one of these days, I'm going to do a video on it. I've been thinking about going back and doing vlogs. I had done vlogs 
and some people complained about the vlogs because I was talking about things they didn't want to hear about, like health problems and so forth. So I took down all of my vlogs, and it wound up I took down nearly 200 videos in all. So for those of you out there who say, you have too many videos, I can't watch them all. I used to have a lot more. Now in a previous video I showed a biblical epic which featured in the cast Richard Harris who would later go on to play Professor Dumbledore in um, the first two Harry Potter films. This is another biblical epic that he is in. The Bible. This was directed by none other than John Huston and produced by Dino De Laurentiis. This runs 170 minutes, which is just 10 minutes shy of three hours, if I'm doing the math right. They say once you learn a skill that you have to use all the time, you don't ever forget how to, how to do it, but they say the same thing about learning to ride a bike, and I can no longer ride a bike because of balance issues. I fall off. This is a sequel to a film uh, that had uh, William Shatner in it. He was in the first one. He's not in this one. This is Big Bad Mama 2. Both fe films feature Angie Dickinson. And while this was distributed by MGMUA, it was produced by Concord, which was one of Roger Corman's many labels or companies. Prior to Concord, he had uh, developed or created New World Pictures, and it was New World who released Death Race 2000. And if it hadn't been for Death Race 2000, we might not have had Mad Max, because George Miller has stated in interviews that when he saw Death Race 2000, in a theater in Australia. He thought the uh, car sequences were great, but he thought he could do better. So he set about to, to do that with the Mad Max film. I don't know why he totally went in a different direction with the third Mad Max film, but the second, in my opinion, Mad Max 2 The Rogue Warrior is the best. Now, this next film is based on a Broadway musical and it's directed or was directed by someone who had just prior to this film directed a, a, the film adaptation of another Broadway musical. That Broadway musical was Fiddler on the Roof and the director Norman Jewison. Now in the uh, extras that are part of the DVD release of um, Fiddler on the Roof that I have. Um, he mentions a joke that was ongoing. It might have been that Topol mentioned it. But anyway, Jewison and Topol had this thing where they went having fun going back and forth. Um, Norman Jewison had a name which means son of a Jew, but he wasn't a Jew. Isn't a Jew. He won't say what he is, but he does say he's not a Jew. Topol is Jewish. So he used to joke on the set of Fears on the Roof that he would convert Norman Jewison to 
Judaism, and then he would have to change his name to Norman Christensen, no, son of a Christian. But anyway, I thought it rather interesting that this was the film that he chose to follow up Fiddler on the Roof with, Jesus Christ Superstar. Music conducted by Andre Previn, used to be married to Mia Farrow. Directed by Norman Jewison, produced by Norman Jewison and Robert Stigwood. Many of you out there know that I love Agneta Foxcog, Foxcog, however you say it. I may be in love with her, but I can't say her name. She was the blonde member of the group ABBA. And uh, I remember seeing a video of her. Um, she was apparently in a Swedish production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Now, I can remember when this film came out, but I didn't go see it. For whatever reason. You can go see Fiddler on the Roof either, which is a shame because uh, it is a really good movie. And um, Norman Jewison tells a story in the extras of the DVD that I mentioned before that uh, he was rather shocked when he was told by executives at United Artists that the film was a huge hit in Japan and he couldn't figure out why and it was explained to him well the film uh, covers uh, ground that the Japanese uh, can relate to that is trying to hold on to old traditions while uh, the younger generation being influenced by other cultures are trying to buck those traditions in um, Japan, after World War II, I, I told you I cannot do a video to save my life without the phone ringing. But thankfully it only rang once, because I guess it died. Anyway, after World War II, uh, a lot of the younger uh, generation Japanese started embracing Western culture and so it was something the Japanese uh, were familiar with, trying to hold on to the old traditions while uh, making peace, if you will, with the uh, newer uh, influences that were coming in. I know I'm rambling. I'm probably not even making any sense, but in a previous video, I showed a uh, tape that I had bought of uh, Ray Stevens. Ray Stevens is, uh, he, uh, well, he has done several different kinds of songs in his career. He is probably best remembered for all of his novelty songs, but he does serious songs too. And um, he has a theater, Ray Stevens Theater, in Branson, Missouri. And as that tape mentioned there are over 50 theaters in Branson. Everybody and their brother has a theater in Branson. So it's a tourist uh, destination. And I was uh, keeping my fingers crossed the other day when that came on the news that a big storm had gone through that area and some of the theaters in Branson had been damaged. I'm hoping that uh, none of the theaters suffered uh, permanent damage or severe damage. Anyway, this tape is called It's Branson. There is also a popular theme park there. Silver Dollar City. 
Now, I don't recall ever going to Branson, but I do remember going to Silver Dollar City. The annual theatrical performances by Branson's greatest stars, including Andy Williams, Boxcar Willie, Mickey Gilly, Jim Stafford, the Linden Sisters, the Osmond Brothers, Roy Clark, Ray Stevens, the uh, Bald Knobbers, Glenn Campbell, and more. I'm finding a lot of Reader's Digest videos lately. I wonder what's up with that. Okay, some of you who are over the age of 20, I would imagine, would know who he is. A Russian uh, comedian. And he was on American television quite a bit in the 80s and 90s. Yakov. Now my wife says his last name is Smirnoff. I don't remember. But he owns his own theater in Branson, Missouri. A 1-800-333-NO-KGB. Apparently his theater is called What a Country Theater. I'm not going to be able to get in as much anime this time around. I've got a, t a ton of anime waiting. But this is The Slayer's Try. And as I mentioned before, all of the episode titles either end with an exclamation point or a question mark. This one ends with a question mark. The Dragon Shrine? And all of the other ones that I have run 75 minutes. This one runs 100 minutes. Okay, finally for the VHS, another sealed tape from another Roger Corman label. New Concord. Sealed copy of Sorority House Massacre. It's part of the Massacre Collection. Don't know how many films make up the Massacre Collection. The new Concord logo looks suspiciously like the old Concord label logo. Okay, now we come to the VCD. I did not know this, but apparently in Hong Kong, prostitutes are referred to as chickens. The name of this film is Golden Chicken. Some of you out there who are familiar with Hong Kong films might be thinking to themselves, Category 3. No, this is Category 2B. Has uh, Cantonese and Mandarin language tracks, Chinese and English subtitles. And it's in widescreen. The Golden Chicken is a riotous and raunchy exploration of one woman's wacky life of prostitution, spanning over 20 years in Hong Kong. Our heroine is Kum, spelled K-U-M, unattractive but so happy-go-lucky and spunky that she is a true Hong Kong survivor and a legend in her own right. 
In Hong Kong, where prostitutes are referred to as chickens, she has earned herself the title of the Golden Chicken, the ultimate hooker. Trapped in an ATM booth with a wannabe robber, Cum decides to pass the time by telling him 101 tales of her life in the sex trade. We follow Cum through her hilarious sexual journeys with horny shenanigans and embarrassing situations galore. At the same time, we are also provided with a refreshingly unique and honest perspective into life, libido, economic, and social change in our beloved Hong Kong throughout the decades. Now, I don't know how to put this. But I kind of liked it. It is one strange movie. But I think that's probably what I like about it. There is a little touch of Purple Rose of Cairo in here. If you're familiar with that Woody Allen film. Mia Farrow. And this takes place in the 30s or 40s. I don't recall which. But Mia Farrow is in an abusive relationship where her husband is beating her. So she goes, she gets into the habit of going to see the same movie over and over again, and she falls in love with a character in the film. Then the character comes off the screen and into the audience and leaves the theater with her, leaving the other cast members on screen looking around befuddled, what do we do now? And then lines up the studio, sends the actor to her to try to convince her, the character to come back. Convoluted. Classic Woody Allen. And um, there's a sequence in this film, I'm not going to give it away, but there's a sequence in this film that uh, is very reminiscent of that. And also, there is a scene where she is at a bar or something, and she is drunk. And she is trying to do Kung Fu. And behind her are a whole bunch of TV sets. And on these TV sets, are they're all running in synchronization. Same part of Jackie Chan's film, The Legend of Drunken Master. And here he is doing his drunken kung fu behind her doing kung fu drunk. I kind of like that sort of thing. Now frequently movies on VCD I've noticed the discs will be different colors. Say one will be blue and one will be red. But this one Both disc one and bit disc two are the same color. But this doesn't look as good as um, Escape from Hong Chai, the last one I showed, which um, I trying to remember who published that. This was published by Panorama. It still looks good, so it sounds good. It's just not quite up to the same standard that Escape from Hung Shai was. Now to the difference between this and the DVD release. The DVD release has this cover. Did I say VCD? No, the DVD release has this cover. But the VCD release has four different covers. And uh, Yes, Asia on their site says that uh, you cannot specify which one you want. You place an order for the title and you get whatever they send out at random. I would kind of like to have all four variations, but how many copies would I have to buy to finally get all four cover variations? Probably more than I need. So I'm trying to figure out what I should do about that. But anyway, I also have gotten in the habit of writing reviews at ES Asia. Um, so far I think I've only written three. But this is one of the films I wrote a review for. 
Golden Chicken. This came out in Hong Kong in 2002, and according to Yes Asia, it was a big commercial hit. Until next time, stay awesome.